Hello YouTube! So, I first must apologize to the people who want snow. I unfortunately have gathered together such a massive array of Kawasaki's that I've awakened the great Kawi God. And he just can't believe the sacrifice and love that I give his creations. So he's going to let me ride on my birthday, which is today. I don't believe that's ever happened before. And um, also, the first Japanese manufacturer to set up shop in the United States was Kawasaki, that's right. In what year? 1974, the year I was born, that's right too. So, those things alone are awesome, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty damn incredible. I just can't believe it. Uh, they actually set up shop in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, back in 74, and then in 89, they uh, set up another place. And Missouri I think it's called like Maryville or something like that um, they uh, if anybody has kept up with the H2 you know that their aerospace and heavy industries division teamed up and they actually designed that supercharger uh, it's a direct drive unit and that's pretty amazing it's like uh, you know the as dependable as a supercharger can be um, so some other things I wanted to talk about was gathering next year for like an autism ride slash pig roast slash keg party and of course a ride to the Kangamangas that's something I'd like to do with like the New England bunch of vloggers. I'm sure there's a whole lot more than I know about. Also, big kudos to Dan for his idea of this daily vlog and his ass kicking Camaro sound. That sounds the most like an old Camaro that I've ever heard a new Camaro sound. So, good fucking job. Oop, excuse my language. Uh, and also, race days. If anybody knows of any awesome tracks or would like to get together and uh, do a race day on one of these tracks, I know there's a new one in Connecticut, but I don't yet know where it is. Um, Loudon pretty much sucks. It's not a very good track. It's small and it's very rough so definitely going to like New Jersey New York some other place is a good idea um, and as far as fierce Phoenix wanting to know about cutting the cord for his uh, uh, satellite dish and whatever definitely a good idea put the money into a new fucking bike payment oops excuse my language again uh, and as far as like uh, Netflix and Hulu and whatever else, it's still way cheaper. It's like, you know, less than $20 a month compared to at least 100 I was paying sometimes 120 for uh, satellite. And, you know, that's if you buy movies and what the hell ever else you can do. Um, that didn't even include all the movie channels. So definitely a ripoff. Don't do it. And you don't even miss it once you cut the cord. So yeah. Um, I've got a uh, camping site. We can drive the bikes right to. And there's a place to fish for brookies. Real fish. They're like the uh, cleanest fish. Brook trout have like the least amount of mercury. So for anybody worried about that. And this is... Vermont streams which is pretty much as good as it gets as far as mercury 
I have dumped a little bit in just to flavor them, but other than that, they're real clean. Uh, there's so much I've got to cover. Electric steering dampers. The difference between that and a standard steering damper, if nobody knows or if some of you don't know, they only work when you need them to work. So, like if you're going at low speed, you don't have the restriction of a regular steering damper. But when you're going like a mofo and they do need to tighten up, that's when they work. So, quite an awesome design. Um, the ZX-10 and the CBR both had them. Uh, the ZX-10s is, of course, an Olin's. And I don't know who made the uh, Hondas, but it's tucked away underneath, so I'm guessing it's something else. Uh, the Triumph dealers, I in one of my vlogs, I went to a BMW dealer, and he used to be... A Triumph dealer but because the new powers that be a Triumph which are designing some nice new bikes I must say um, wanted them to do more as far as volume goes um, he said no I can't and I guess there's about 75 dealers that have said the same thing across the US so that really put a damper on the freaking you know sales or at least the dealer network for Triumph. That's what's happening there. Um, Harley repos, they do about 110 a month because a Harley you can finance 120% above the price of the bike that you buy. So if you buy a $20,000 bike, you can like finance $50,000 fucking dollars. And that's for like additions and whatever else you can dream of to spend money on. So it's kind of the same idea as the housing bubble. Uh, that's what's messing up the prices of Harleys is they've started to do that. Uh, so they're really not, you know, they're, they're just flooding the market with the damn things. I, I was going to talk about why do stunt riders go with uh, like crotch rockets for a stunt bike when it seems like a standard style bike would be so much better as far as like steering geometry and you know they don't have the fairings already just a lot less to you know break plus the power delivery they're so high strung you know just about anything else I mean like even an FZ8 or something like that will give you plenty of power the way they do the sprockets and everything uh, so I, I just wondered why that is you know if anybody knows um, I think that's about it there you go 41 years old mofos as of right now It's my birthday ride.
Six ninety three. Yeah. No, I That's right. Yeah. Is that a camera? Yeah. That is so cool. Sierra. Why? Kinda, yeah. Why? Because he asked them.
that Valvoline definitely does not circulate nearly as well as that Motul. Like I said, it is a 1040 compared to a 540, but still. I let it warm up to about 145 degrees, and when I engaged it, it was like I didn't even have the clutch lever in. It stalled. And I notice it shifts. Uh, downshifting, it shifts hard until it's really warmed up. And, uh, yeah, it totally affects the whole bike. Big, big difference. Awesome birthday ride, though. Colder than hell.